we have rhythm and rhythm, go I'm in rhythm with body and soul, younger, more introspective, mm -hmm. and professional. And then we have rhythm and boo booze, uh, getting in the thirties, heavy yeah. toward midlife, yeah. evaluation of the life. Yeah. And then jazz funeral, facing mortality. Yeah. And all this time, what did you discover about Julie, the poet? Oh. versus Julie the woman? Are they one and the same? Oh, that's a good question. I think um, the bout with melanoma, well actually the when I quit drinking, which was in 1990, that's when I decided that I needed to get back more seriously to poetry. I mean, you know, I've been writing. I've been part of the Make Believe Poets and I've, you know, published, you know, two little chapbooks in England and stuff. But um but I had been doing it, you know, sort of on the side and I hadn't really pursued it. And I was working as a technical writer as, as you have. And also I was making very good money as a technical writer. Yes. And I decided that, you know, I looked around at poets I knew, you know, who were getting their work out, you know, getting, you know, reaching audiences, and most of them seemed to have a base at a university, you know, and I really loved, uh, occasionally people would ask me to come to their classes, like Kay Murphy had had me come to NOCA, you know, New Orleans Center for Creative Arts, a couple times, and to her classes at UNO to speak, and I'd been to Loyola University and Southern, you know, New Orleans, and you know, various times, LSU, Sue Owen would have me come, and I, you know, I loved doing that. Uh, technical writing, uh, I technical writing to me was like doing a crossword puzzle. It was mm -hmm. challenging, you know. I worked with really good people, and I got paid very well for it. But I decided that I was going to go back to graduate school and get a PhD because I knew, you know, an MSA wasn't a very good guarantee of a job and I was going to make a serious push to try to, you know, to try to give more time to my poetry and mm -hmm. see if I were any good at it and if I could, you know, reach people with it. So it was, you know, it was largely because of that, it was largely because of quitting drinking, you mm -hmm. know, one year later I started you know, at, at LSU in a PhD program. So you're saying when you gave up drinking, you got more clarity about your work? Yeah, well, I guess I decided to take it seriously, to, mm -hmm. be, profe to be a professional, mm -hmm. not, a, not an amateur, if that makes any sense. You know, I'm going to be a poet. I'm not just going to be somebody who writes poetry on the side. I'm going to be, and how afraid, I'm be a poet. How afraid of you, how afraid were you with that decision? Left that good job where I was making more than I'm making now as a tenured full professor, not even adjusting for inflation. And I went back to graduate school. I was getting twelve thousand a year. Mm -hmm. I was lucky to get that little you know fellowship. But suddenly I was you know I was poor, mm -hmm. and it you know I lived that way. I I left my lovely you know seven room apartment mm -hmm. in New Orleans and moved to St. Gabriel to a little bitty place mm -hmm. at the end of a growl road. And I, but, you know, it was wonderful. It was, it was, it was wonderful. And I started all over again, you know, at NSU as an assistant professor for, you know, a very mm -hmm. small salary. But, but I had another, another, you know, wake up call too, which was when I had the malignant melanoma mm -hmm. in 2000. You know, I had been, I, I had like realigned my life with poetry. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, now teaching poetry mm -hmm. and creative writing, whereas before, I was a technical writer and I'd done it on the side. But after the melanoma hit, I still didn't have a nationally published poetry book out there. And I thought, you know, because I thought I could die in two and a half years. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there was a right there, a pretty, pretty good odds that, you know, that I would. And so I decided I was going to throw everything into trying to get mm -hmm. a book published with a national press. Mm -hmm. And I sent the Rhythm and Booze manuscript out to more than a dozen different contests. Mm -hmm. And I mailed them all out before leaving for Lithuania mm -hmm. on that Fulbright for the year, you know, and 
by God, you know, it won the National Poetry Series and it, and yeah. it came out. So that was the beginning of a new phase for me where I went from, you know, from, I guess, you know, being, you know, kind of... A professor writing poetry as opposed to being a, a poet yeah. to as a professor. Yeah, to kind of, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. to sort of take part in that, you know, sort of national or mm -hmm. international discourse of, you know, of contemporary poetry after that.